Hi everyone, this is Teo from ParkerBlocks.com. Today I'm going to talk about this monitor. This is the Dell U2917W Extra Wide Aspect Ratio Monitor. First of all, special thanks to Dell Singapore for providing me with this review unit. I have used this extensively for two weeks. So today I'm going to talk about the performance. I have separated the review from the unboxing video so if you want to check out what's inside the box you can watch the other video the link is in the video description below the only graphics cable included is the mini display to the full-size display port cable I have used that to connect my Mac Pro to the monitor so if your computer doesn't have a mini display port then uh, you will need a HDMI cable but the HDMI cable is not included even though this monitor has HDMI connection let's talk about the build quality first um, as usual the build quality is fantastic I have bought many Dell monitors before and I've always been satisfied with their build quality so here let's take a look a closer look at this this is the stand so this monitor is quite thin but it's not that thin and this is the full height you can adjust the monitor upwards and down you can tilt the monitor like this but you cannot rotate the monitor um, to a portrait mode the screen is actually matte so it's not glossy it diffuses light but everything still appears to be sharp however the resolution is actually 2560 by 1440 so it does appear pixelated but only when you compare it to 4k monitors I like a matte surface monitor because I just hate reflections especially when working on stuff this is the hole on the stand that I use to manage my cable the power indicator light faces downwards so from the front is just a very small lighted area here so the manuals are just right below this is the port for the power two HDMI 1.4 ports one full-size display port one mini display port and this is a full-size display port in this is the 3.5 mm headphone jack this is the USB upstream port and these two are USB 3 downstream ports the screen and the bezel they are flush on the same surface so this is very nice the bezel is quite thin it's about 1 cm but definitely not as thin compared to the infinity edge displays I actually prefer bezels to be a bit thicker also um, not that thick because I like the black border to frame whatever that I'm working on and if the bezel is a bit too thin then sometimes I get distracted by all the things that are happening outside because the transition between your work and the background is uh, not that strong but with a black border like this I like it this is an IPS panel so color reproduction is very good they'll advertise this to support 99% sRGB I use my Spider 5 Pro color calibrator and I measured 100% sRGB 77% Adobe RGB so if you are a graphic designer thinking of getting this monitor I think this satisfies the color accuracy criteria if you need to work with printed proofs or you need to work with printers then I suggest you get 100% Adobe RGB but more on graphic design later the viewing angle is very good too let me show you when I look at the screen in the center and I compare the colors here from the left and the right side they are the same to me so viewing angles is good so when I work on files I need the colors to be even when I want black I need to make sure that it is black throughout so in this case this monitor it shows me that with lower quality monitors or with those monitors that use TM panels when you look at the front the colors here they are going to be different from the left and the right because now this monitor is extra wide so the color shift is going to be even more pronounced for those lower quality monitor but here I think this is um, this is quite good let's talk about the aspect ratio now 
This is a 21 by 9 aspect ratio monitor which is equivalent to 2.33 to 1 which is one of the movie making aspect ratio. So if you watch a lot of movies in that aspect ratio, this is a monitor that you can consider because well first of all the colors are great and this aspect ratio when you watch those movies on it there are not going to be any black bars at the top so the movie is going to fill this screen completely this is how movies are going to look like it's fantastic it fills up the whole screen and it really feels quite immersive let me show you gaming this is Tomb Raider a very old game the frame rate that is supported by this monitor is 60 frames per second so if you are a hardcore gamer you need more frame rates then this monitor is not going to cut it but if you do not mind 60 frames per second or if you are gaming on consoles most of the time then you can still consider this monitor the selling point is the colors of course and it's actually quite enjoyable playing games like this the extra wide view it feels it feels quite nice, it feels quite different from those 16x9 uh, monitors and now I'm going to talk about the major downside of this aspect ratio if you are a content creator you might find it frustrating at times to work with certain software now when it comes to web browsing I think it's perfectly fine it's great to see pages side by side you can compare, you can work on multiple documents at the same time so web browsing is not a problem if you do a lot of video or photo editing that's where you might feel frustrated working with such a screen so this is Adobe Lightroom a photo editing software and right now it feels a bit squash I can turn off the dock at the bottom which I'm going to do right now so this gives me the extra space so let me expand this now if I were to work on a specific photo for example I can double click it and here I have this huge bar at the left and at the right this is wasted space I cannot do anything with this space I mean I can zoom in but at the default view like this this is wasted space so this is photo editing you may use other software if it's able to fill up all the screens with the palettes and stuff like that I think it's great but right now as it is uh, I think it's um, unnecessary to have all this wasted space let me switch over to Final Cut now this is Final Cut Pro so again it feels a bit squash now the resolution is 2560 by 1080 so um, compared to my 27 inch monitor which has more vertical pixel I was able to see more of the timeline so usually when I'm working with this software I have to scroll a lot like this because there is a lot going on in the timeline I have to scroll quite often but with my other monitor I do not have to do all this it doesn't really take a lot of time to scroll but it's more productive to be able to see everything that you have and just work on it rather than um, constantly tweaking whatever you can or cannot see so sometimes I feel a bit frustrated when working with Final Cut Pro on this aspect ratio also when you are viewing movies for example there are going to be black bars on the left and right side if you are doing uh, if you're watching YouTube videos there are going to be these black bars on the left and right side now on YouTube there are not a lot of movies with the aspect ratio of 2.33 to 1 even if there are those uh, movies or videos in that in those aspect ratio most likely they are uploaded with black bars at the top so you're going to see black bars at the top bottom together with the left and the right um, that's going to be again a lot of wasted space so I actually watch a lot of YouTube videos I create a lot of YouTube videos as well so when I look at the scene that I'm looking at like this I think it's it's workable but it's not the best aspect ratio for 
working on this sort of content. There is one last thing I want to say. This monitor has some IPS glow, but that is only evident if you are working in an environment that is very dim or dark. If you are working in a room and the lights are on, you are not going to see that. If you are watching a movie and you turn off all the lights at night, in total darkness, you are going to see that glow. And that glow will depend on the angle that you are viewing the monitor at. So if you are looking at, for example, your head is around here, you are going to see a lot of glow here. And if your head is right in the center, then the glow will be evenly spread out. I think it's not that big of a problem because this is just one of the characteristics of IPS monitor and it's unavoidable right now with the current technology. Um, I still enjoy watching movies on this monitor at night. The other thing is there is some backlight bleeding at the top left. It's not that significant but it is there if you are looking for it. At least for this specific unit that I am reviewing. Some units may have the backlight bleeding somewhere else but for this unit it's not that significant. I just want to point out that it's there. Is it going to be a problem for me? Not really. Again, the backlight bleeding only shows up when the room is in total darkness. I don't usually work like that. So to conclude, I would say that I am very satisfied with the build quality and the performance of this monitor. This is a niche monitor that is targeted at those who watch films at the 2.33 aspect ratio and those gamers who like the extra panorama scene. So if you watch a lot of those films and you play a lot of games, then I would recommend this to you. But if you are looking for a general purpose monitor, this is not it. I think you can get 16 by 9 aspect ratio monitors. Those would do better as a general purpose monitor. And for content creators, those who do video or photo editing, I think you're going to get quite frustrated using this monitor because um, there isn't a lot of vertical space to show all of your software. And I've been using this for two weeks every day all i can think about is to get back to my 16 by 9 aspect ratio monitor so yeah and i watch a lot of youtube videos as mentioned earlier i see a lot of thick black bars on the left and right side if you are watching um, 2.33 films on a 16 by 9 monitor you're going to get thin bars at the top and bottom but if you are using this monitor to watch the 16 by 9 videos you're going to get very thick bars I think it's better to have thin bars rather than thick bars so that's it for my review today if you have any questions so my overall recommendation is this get the appropriate monitor for the type of work that you do or the content that you consume and that's all for my review today. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. I will also post a link to my text review where you can see any updates if there are any or just read the full specs of this monitor. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.